Welcome everyone to the Artesia Pilar Neighborhood Association virtual meeting. We're still doing virtual meetings. Um, this is Margarita with the City's Neighborhood Initiatives Program and we're so glad that you've joined us tonight. We have a great agenda and uh, we will be starting shortly. Um, Alyssa, as people are joining, do you just want to go over um, some of the ways that people can participate, including Spanish speakers, los que hablan español también? Yeah. So there are a couple of ways to participate during the meeting. So I'll do English and then I'll do it in Spanish. Um, so you can raise your hand. There's a raise your hand feature that is on the bottom of the PowerPoint. Um, just click on it if you want to get our attention or if you want to speak during the presentation. If you have any questions, um, you can ask a question in the chat box. I think we're doing Zoom meeting, so there is no Q&A box. Um, hay diferentes maneras de participar en esta reunión. Um, pueden usar, uh, pueden levantar la mano, que es este botón que está aquí abajo. Si tienen un comentario para hacer o si quieren nuestra atención. Y también para hacer una pregunta, lo pueden escribir en el cuadro de chat. Entonces, esas son dos maneras que pueden participar. Los que están llamando, um, si están llamando por su teléfono, si quieren levantar la mano, marque estrella 9. Y para hablar, va a poner, uh, va a premir estrella 6. Entonces, estrella 9 para uh, Si quiere nuestra atención y quiere hablar y después oprime estrella 6 para hablar. So if you are dialing in, um, press star 9 if you want to raise your hand and um, grab our attention. And then um, once we call on you, you'll press star 6 to unmute yourself during the meeting. So those are the options for those of you that are dialing in on your phone. And then we also have Spanish interpretation available. Um, you'll see the little globe. Um, Margarita, I don't think I could turn it on. I think you. Yes, let me turn option. it on right now. Oh, yeah, okay. let me turn it on. Tenemos interpretación en español disponible. Entonces, para uh, poner o, poder oír esta junta en español, uh, va a tener que oprimir este botón que se mira como un mundo y después va a oprimir el idioma que va a ser español. Muchas gracias. Hey, Ruby, did you want to uh, introduce yourself and? Uh, yes, I'm Ruby, uh, Ruby Wu, um, the uh, president of the Neighborhood Association. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Artesia Bar meeting. We're here to share neighborhood information, city news, support neighborhood improvement, and sponsor community events. I also do a co-chair with Lucy Solazzo and Tricia Morales, which will speak up in a few minutes. But our agenda is going to have, we're, we nicely have uh, Councilman Jonathan Hernandez here. We're going to have the Madison Park Association, who has been very good in getting the neighborhood organized with significant issues within our community that are affecting us. And I will mention a few issues that we have been working the last, in the year 2002, and that we'll be working in 2001. And uh, at the last, we'll be having some questions. We'll be having some questions after Ryan if somebody wants to ask some questions now. But uh, does Trisha want to say hello to everyone? And Lucy, a few words before we start with uh, Jonathan. Thank you, Ruby. Um, thank you for your leadership and, and for your commitment to the Artisa Pilar neighborhood. Um, it's a pleasure to see everybody here today. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces. Good to see you, Luz. Um, Margarita, always a pleasure. I, I admire the good work that you've done across our city and, um, and our police department here as well. Um, my name is uh, Jonathan Hernandez. I have the honor of representing 
um, the city of Santa Ana and uh, Ward 5. My family has been in Ward 5 since the 1950s. Um, my family migrated from San Juan de los Lagos, Jalisco in the 1950s. My mom's side of the family and my dad's side of the family. Uh, we are originally from the city of Los Angeles. Um, my, my family um, on my dad's side um, has, has been in the United States um, dating back to the early 1800s. So we are certainly um, Angelinos and I'm, I'm proud to be a Santanero. I am a product of San Unified School District. I went to Fremont Elementary here in Arthesia. I went to uh, Spurgeon Intermediate and I'm a proud saint uh, from Santa Ana High School. And um, as your council member, I am going to advocate um, for us to have a community-based solution-oriented approach to building in the city. Um, Arthesia Pilar is a very diverse neighborhood in our community. And I look forward to strengthening our public safety efforts by focusing on addressing the root causes of crime in our community. I don't believe that creating pathways for our children and our families, I don't think that we should have pathways for them to go to jail or prison. I want to see our families um, get the support and services that they need so that we can develop vibrant young people in this community. Um, there is very much a desire to see um, more sports programming in our community. We have a handball court, we have basketball courts that desperately need to be repaired. And I look forward to advocating for that. Um, some of the additional advocacy efforts that I would like to have in Arthes Apilad is I'd like to see the El Salvador Park restrooms be reconstructed and rebuilt. Um, so that way people feel safe in their park. Um, they feel safe utilizing the, the, our restrooms. And I would like to see more community involvement in our community garden so that we can actually have food access and food equity in Artisa Pilar. Uh, furthermore, I would wanna see more senior programs at our El Salvador Park Community Center so that we can have our seniors um, be involved in their community. Um, obviously COVID has affected all of us, um, but pending that we are all wearing our masks, that we are all practicing good hygiene and in complying with the COVID safety guidelines, I think that Artisa Pilar can be a very vibrant and safe and thriving community. Um, when we all work together, we can get a lot accomplished. Um, furthermore, um, having strong public safety efforts is a very much an intersectional approach. And I know that my predecessor, he did a very good job in, in having a very balanced approach. My approach is gonna be a bit different. I, I want to have a very policy oriented approach to, to making our community safe. Um, my, my proposals are gonna be to work with the Neighborhood Association of Artis Pilar, to work with our police department in assigning officers that we can have strong communication with so that we know the officers that are patrolling our neighborhood so that there is a stronger sense of accountability. There's a stronger sense of knowledge that our residents have. And I believe that those residents, it would be beneficial for them to have that information at their disposal. Um, so that we can work in conjunction with our department in building relationships. Um, in addition to that, I grew up in, in this neighborhood. I know all the complexities that come with it. Um, my father, um, I grew up without him, unfortunately, because he was a gang member. And when I grew custom to having um, police searches and, and um, you know, constant probation officers, pro officers come to our household, oftentimes I felt left out of our community. So what I am gonna look to propose as part of our public safety um, strategies is to have a, more, um, have a more family wrapped around approach to public safety. So when it does come to families that do make mistakes and fall through the cracks, I want to see us introduce a component where we're able to help families in our neighborhood and get them the services that they need um, unfortunately, on January 14th, a young lady was, was taken from us in the city of Garden Grove, but she resided here in, in our Artis Pilar community. I reached out to that family and got them the um, family health services that they need, connected them to grief counselors, connected them to social services uh, to help their children, and got them resources um, to help pay for their burial. I think that that's the responsibility and the role of government and I'll work very closely with our police department to make sure that 
that all of our departments in our city serve our residents. And lastly, I, I want to see more civic engagement with the residents here in Artesia. And I look forward to helping you, Ruby, and all of the wonderful leaders here uh, accomplish that. Thank you very much. Uh, Alyssa, is there any questions or? There does not seem to be any questions in the chat or any people raising their hands. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to type it in the chat box or raise your hand. Yeah, there's nothing coming in. Okay. So thank you very much, Jonathan. It was very nice of you. And I'm hoping to see you at the next meeting, which is going to be in March. So you can get data on the things that you're going on and maybe we'll get some more questions. Uh, you have time. my commitment that I will be at every single meeting moving forward. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Absolutely. Be careful what you say, Jonathan. Hey, it's my backyard. I can assure you I'll be there. <laughs> okay. So uh, let's go on to our next subject. It's very important. And uh, the Madison Park Neighborhood Association has been doing tremendous job of outreaching to their neighborhood and community with information about the uh, public, uh, about the COVID-19 uh, environmental justice and the general plan that we need to keep up um, getting information in this public hearings because they're all needed to be budgeted within the neighborhood uh, within the next 10 years. So if it isn't budgeted, uh, that's not going to happen. And so right now, he, this neighborhood, Madison Park neighborhood, with Jose Rios and Leon, Leon Flores is going to present to us. So the show's on you. Alyssa? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, oh, yeah. Introduce oh, yourself. <laughs> you want to start off, Jose? Yeah. So, hi. Uh, thank you, Margarita and Elisa and, and, and Ruby and Lucy for the invitation. I'm Jose Rea. I serve as the treasurer for the Madison Park Neighborhood Association. And uh, Leo, you want to, Leonel, you want to introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Leonel Flores. Uh, I am the community organizer for the MPM Green Programs and also a resident here of Madison Park uh, my whole life. Great. So, uh, you know, the Madison Park, uh, I've been a resident of, of, the, of the Neighborhood Association for 20, 22 years. I'm Jalisciense, born and raised in Jalisco. And um, I'm also, uh, you know, I came to Santana maybe 37 years ago before I when I transferred from SLA College to UC Irvine, and I've been a resident of the city since then. Um, and um, I, we moved, my wife and I moved into the neighborhood. She was a teacher at Santa Unified for 31 years. Um, and uh, we, um, we decided to stay in the city uh, and, and, and water, purchase our house here in, in the Madison neighborhood um, back in, uh, in 1998. And so it's been a while. And uh, we, we were engaged in the neighborhood for some time. And uh, we got really excited about 11 years ago when the California Endowment picked uh, this area of Santa Ana for the Santa Ana Neighborhood Initiative, uh, the Santa Ana Building Health Communities. And so we thought, oh, oh God, this is, you know, God sent. Everybody's going to come and knock on our door and we're going to be able to continue the good work that we're doing in the community. But to our surprise, nobody came and knocked on our door. And so we decided to become a nonprofit. And um, in 2011, we got our first grant from the, from the California Endowment. And uh, we launched what is described as the Madison Park Neighborhood green programs and there's three things that we do uh, in, in, in through MPNA Green and that is uh, a youth educational development, uh, family health and wellness and a safe and clean environment. That's what is, we've been doing for the last 10 years. Can we go to the next slide? And this is just some of the programs that we do. Currently we have about 120 kids in our programs. We, we try to promote higher education uh, with an emphasis on STEM careers. And we use uh, uh, faculty 
uh, teachers from Madison Elementary, uh, parents and students, but also um, mentors from UCLA and UCI to develop these programs. Um, one from elementary school kids, um, and then also we have an intermediate school program and also a high school program. And we also required our parents to, to participate in four workshops throughout the year to, to learn about financial aid and higher education in the United States and things of that, of that sort. But the emphasis is on STEM careers. STEAM, since they added art uh, to science, technology, engineering, arts and mathematics. So that's what, one of the things that we do. Uh, the next slide. Um, this is some of the examples. You know, the picture on the, on the, on the left is uh, some of the high school students at UC Irvine School of Medicine. And the, uh, the picture on the, on the right is the elementary school kids and some of the high school students at the UCI Medical Center during the day where they play uh, to be a doctor for the day. So this is outside of one of the buildings in, in the medical center. Next slide. So uh, in addition to the youth program, we also do uh, health and wellness. And you know, since the pandemic, we've been doing two things. One is the, uh, we have uh, um, three physicians that are volunteer with us. Um, Dr. Solis, Dr. Chaveri, and Dr. Lopez. And they are uh, running um, a diabetes uh, certificate program virtually. And, that, uh, and then we also, um, you know, we started last April and July with town halls uh, regarding COVID. And obviously uh, we uh, increased the uh, the number of town halls and also um, workshops, um, you know, during the month of January, because that's when we saw how uh, the numbers have increased in the community in terms of, of uh, people getting, um, you know, sick, but also people uh, dying. So this is the, the one of the town halls that, um, that the, uh, that Margarita and others were able to attend on, 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 the, on the 7th, it was the, the first one that we had. And we have one uh, coming up uh, a week from tomorrow, that's the second one. And uh, basically uh, to, there was a researcher and also a physician, an emergency medicine physician this, that, that uh, answered questions and presented different topics that are relevant to the community. It's a collaboration with the school. It's a collaboration with uh, the school district, our neighborhood, uh, UC Irvine. And we also, in addition to presenting the information in Zoom, then um, we also um, run it uh, via uh, Facebook uh, simultaneously, but in also Radio Santa Ana. And uh, there was uh, so many questions that went unanswered on this town hall. So we had one in English, one in Spanish, that we uh, scheduled three subsequent um, Q and A's um, just to respond to the questions that uh, that were not answered, but also to discuss uh, some of other relevant issues in terms of uh, Zoom. And so this, uh, this one just uh, ended last week on the 28th was the last Q and A and we're getting ready for the uh, second town hall, which is actually our fourth one. We, hold it to, uh, we hosted two in uh, 20, um, 2020 and then this is gonna be the second one for 2021. Next slide. So this is uh, basically the certificate program for for the diabetes that is uh, run by Dr. Chaveri and Dr. Solis. And um, this is also, uh, every, every month we start in 2020, and these are the meetings for 2021. And uh, the people that attend this meeting uh, with uh, at least 90% attendance, they will receive a certificate um, for, for, for this training. So next slide. Um, hi, Jose. Yeah. Uh, we actually have a question um, yeah. from Anna. Uh, she wrote it in the chat box. She okay. said, um, 
Are there plans for COVID-19 vaccines for the community? We have many seniors in the community without computer access. You know, uh, we are working with that. I mean, we're talking to, I know the city of Santa Ana has already been able to begin offering um, some vaccines, but that's what we hope that that, that is going to happen because uh, we know, you know, we, uh, we have, we actually work on all the entire uh, southeast side of, of, of the city with not only just Madison. And uh, we know that there is a lot of families that don't have transportation and there's a lot of seniors that cannot go to Soka University or Disneyland to get the vaccines. So, um, you know, there is a, there is a, there's a need for, for uh, to reach out to the Federal Qualified Health Centers, which is in Santa Ana, um, there's at least two of them. One is the, uh, the UCI clinic uh, uh, on Main Street. And, and, and then the other one is the Serve the People on 17th Street. And we're working with them to see if, if they'd be able to use our schools or our parks uh, for vaccination. Because we know that, uh, that um, you know, uh, the communities like ours, we are disproportionately impacted by COVID. And we see also that the folks that, that are getting the vaccines are, are not the people from our community. So we wanna make sure that this is gonna be a, a more equitable type of, of situation. So we're reaching out to the county and also to the clinic to see if this is something they can do to have more rights and more vaccines here in, the, here in, the, in, the, in our neighborhoods in the, in the city of Santa Ana. So, uh, next slide. So, uh, Leo, I think yeah. that this yeah, is your hear. this is your part of the presentation. All right. So, uh, I'm going to talk about our third um, our third um, pillar for the programs here at Green, um, which is safe and clean environments. Uh, so basically what we focus on with this is our QUAL committee, which stands for Comunidad Unida Aire Limpio or Community United Clean Air. Um, it's a resident uh, driven steering committee that focuses on environmental justice. Um, it's a service learning internship. So uh, we've been teaching them about different issues such as environmental justice, um, civic engagement, public policy, um, and giving back to their community. Along with that, um, for the last about, uh, I would say a year and a half, almost two years, we've been working uh, with the city of Santa Ana on their general plan update to uh, update um, their environmental justice policies uh, and to include more better environmental justice policies uh, to help out our affected communities. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of this project. Um, the reason this all started was back in 2017. Um, the residents from our neighborhood received a letter from the South Coast Air Quality Management District, um, basically telling them that there was a company that was requesting a permit to, to emit uh, chemicals into the air. And this company was less than a thousand feet from Madison Elementary. Kennedy Elementary and just outside of the thousand feet was also Century High School. Um, the big problem with this notice though was that all the notices were sent in English and we live in a community that's uh, predominantly Spanish speaking um, or most or only reads in Spanish. So the information was very inaccessible and the residents did not know what was going on. Um, because of this, the residents reached out to us and to the school um, so in September of that same year, which we reached out to then council member Sarmiento, uh, now our current mayor, um, to see what he could do and find out for us. At that point, he was our council member. Um, so he contacted, uh, the South Coast Air Quality Management District. And in December of 2017, um, he got this map that you see on the right. And basically what, uh, the Air Quality Management District told him is that uh, there isn't just one company that was requesting permits. Uh, there's actually a corridor that exists with 42 companies that have permits to uh, release chemicals into our air. Um, so we found this very shocking um, because one, uh, 
most of the residents who've been living here for years did not know any of this was going on. Um, two, um, these are all very close proximity to about um, seven or eight schools. Some schools are even within this industrial corridor. Um, so we wanted to find out, um, you know, how why are they giving so many permits away? What kind of chemicals they're releasing and what they're doing uh, to our environment, to our kids and to our community members. Um, so because of this, we reached out to the city. Um, um, back in 2018, there was a state bill passed called SB 1000. Basically it says, if you have any disadvantaged communities in your neighborhood, you have to incorporate environmental justice in your general plan whenever it's updated. So uh, this last year, the city tried to update their general plan. Um, so we told them they had to incorporate environmental justice because at that point in time, we weren't seeing any um, substantial changes or substantial environmental justice policies um, in place. Um, so because of the letter that we sent to, to them through the environmental law clinic from the University of California, Irvine, the city released this map which shows the different uh, disadvantaged communities in Santa Ana. Um, basically, if you're a disadvantaged community, um, you have many of these things um, happening in your community, which include diesel emissions, poor air quality, um, groundwater contamination. Uh, there's cleanup sites with contaminated soil, uh, high traffic density, um, which also causes air pollution, um, housing burden, which pretty much means um, the cost of rent is really high. Um, linguistic isolation, so um, like in our community, it's um, monolingual Spanish or mon there's also monolingual um, Vietnamese and Cambodian communities um, that have been left out of the process. Um, and then also with all these chemicals um, could potentially contribute to low birth weight in infants and uh, diseases and things like that. And then the final uh, uh, factor that's also present in these communities is these are high poverty areas, areas with low income. So in order to be uh, classified as a disadvantaged community by this, uh, uh, this Senate bill for the state of California, um, yeah, there has to be a high poverty rate, high housing burden, and a disproportionate amount of environmental pollution compared to other parts of the city. So if every portion here highlighted in um, this hot pink color are basically disadvantaged communities, which includes the Artesia Pilar neighborhood, which would be like this section right here. So this another, it's basically the same map. But this one, uh, it shows the different neighborhoods that are labeled as disadvantaged. So we have the Artesia Pilar neighborhood, Cedar Evergreen, Centennial, Central City, Cornerstone Village, Delhi, Downtown, Flower Park, French Court, French Park, Henninger Park, Lacey, Logan, Lion Street, Madison Park, Memorial Park, Pacific Park, Pico Lowell, Riverview West, Sandpoint, and Willard. So if you live in any one of these 21 communities, um, you live in a community that's affected by all the um, contributors that I showed in the last slide. So this is roughly about a third of the city or around a little over 100,000 residents, which is a lot. So um, it was very shocking to us that there wasn't much being done at that point to address all these environmental justice issues. Um, and these are just some of the schools that reside within those neighborhoods that are also affected by this on a daily basis. So then um, we started investigating more um, and we came across this map, which is something that um, is supposed to be updated in the general plan. Um, but this is the land use uh, map or also known as the zoning, which shows um, what kind of uh, buildings or industry can be built in certain areas. So we live uh, here in the Southeast portion of Santa Ana, which is in Ma uh, Madison Park. Um, so we live right next to this industrial corridor, this big purple thing right here. Um, as you can see on the legend, this is the industrial corridor. Um, and we did not know this existed until um, we got that letter from the Air Quality Management District telling us there was these 42 companies there. 
Um, and as you can see here, if you look at the light blue squares, these are all schools that are either within or right next to this industrial corridor. So this means like every day that our students are going to school, they're basically breathing the chemicals that are released by these companies. Um, if we take a look on this side of the map, um, you could see that Artesia Pilar has a similar problem too. Um, the industrial area is not as big, but there is also an industrial area that takes up a big portion of the community, which uh, we believe be affecting uh, the air quality for the residents in this area. Um, and as you notice, um, there's one more corridor here on the southwest side. And then again, there's one school that's pretty much right in the middle. This school that's highlighted or circled right here, this is Century High School. And as you can see, it's surrounded by industry um, 360 degrees. So it's fully engulfed by the industrial corridor, um, which we also found um, to be very shocking. Um, and then another thing uh, we wanted to point out from this map, um, uh, for your neighborhood, there, there's uh, more green space, but if you take a look at the city as a whole, um, there are very little parks. Um, many of you might be aware, um, Santa Ana is a park poor city. Um, and we, we truly believe that adding more parks is beneficial to the community, not only because it has uh, places for families to go, but because with all the green space, uh, we believe that hopefully it could help improve the air quality here in the city. Uh, so this last map is a map that we got from the California Environmental Protection Agency that shows the air quality in the map compared to other regions in the state. Um, if you look at this map of Santa Ana, um, if you're in the 90th to 100th percentile, um, highest score, that means you have the worst air quality in the state. Um, the greener, the better. Um, so if you can see this bottom right uh, section, we are in the worst 10% of air quality um, in the state. If you look at the city in the whole, we're between the 70 and 90%. So we're about top 25 worst air quality in the city. Artesia Pilar, which would be around here, uh, same between the 70 and 90 percentile rate. Um, so the air quality in our city um, is pretty bad. Um, another thing we noticed, um, I took I actually took this screenshot yesterday. Um, this was updated in June, 2018. Um, so it kind of also shows like, um, it's not only our city that kind of isn't um, putting too much focus on this, but also the state hasn't really cracked down on this. So that's why we're working on this. So hopefully we can improve these conditions for, this, for the city of Santa Ana um, because, you know, this map is uh, two years old. So even the city is not keeping a very tight look. So that's why we're working on this project. Um, hopefully try to find out um, what co is contributing to this. Uh, pro the air problem and what we can do to resolve it. So um, basically, after we found out all this information in 2018, uh, or in 2018, we solicited funds to start this project. And that's what led us to finding out this information. Um, we received the funds from the California Air Resources Board uh, through the CARB grant. And in September and in 2018 of uh, November 2018 and early 2019, uh, we started forming the Quad Committee, uh, which is a resident driven committee. Um, and they basically worked on, they had workshops twice a month during the first year in regards to air pollution, environmental justice, and public policy. And then following that, they started an information campaign to educate the community about environmental justice, um, uh, what's going on in our neighborhoods in regards to the air quality issues and the lack of environmental justice policies in the city. Um, at our walkathon in October of 2019, uh, our quad committee um, made banners, uh, our city representatives walked with those banners um, and they presented information to the community about the project uh, we we're involved with. Um, and pretty much now in 2020, uh, we continued those training workshops um, and we were supposed to start measuring the quality of the air, um, but due to the COVID pandemic, um, we were forced to stop the project for about six months. So luckily we were able to get an extension uh, on the project, uh, which will be going hopefully uh, it should be going till the end of this June, but hopefully uh, we might get uh, some more time to 
monitor the air quality. Um, one of the things that we'd like to highlight is um, we had a successful campaign to extend the process for updating the general plan for the city of Santa Ana. Um, so the city of Santa Ana was really um, intent on passing the general plan without incorporating significant uh, environmental justice policies. So our quad committee, as well as other neighborhoods and other uh, environmental nonprofits in the city, um, we united uh, to rally the community and basically ask them to give us more time to incorporate these policies because you know we're the residents that live this every day um, and we're affected by you know all these contributors so they need to address to improve the quality of life for the residents of Santa Ana and you know our focus has been uh, especially on the air quality you know because we breathe this every day um, and you know uh, um, now with the COVID pandemic uh, how do you say it? You know, uh, they've been saying a lot of people with um, health issues are the ones that have become affected the most. But another thing that they've been uh, finding out is that people with, um, or how do you say it? They're finding out that places with poor air quality are also having worse uh, uh, COVID impacts, you know? So uh, it's kind of like a recipe for disaster. So we're trying to work to hopefully help um, alleviate um, those problems here in the community in regards to the air quality and basically now this year um, we're going to start uh, gathering data here in uh, the southeast side of Santa Ana um, but we'd also like to extend the invitation out uh, to any community members from the Artesia Pilar uh, neighborhood. Uh, we have two studies that we're actually running. Um, one of them uh, so uh, we we're fortunate enough to be selected by NASA and the Air Quality Management District to participate in an international study with them. Um, this study is comparing and contrasting the air quality between the greater Los Angeles region, uh, the state of North Carolina, and India, uh, all the way across the ocean. And uh, they gifted us 14 purple air monitors that we're setting up throughout the community um, to monitor the air quality, which they're gonna use to compare and contrast the air. Um, at the moment, we have 10 monitors installed. Um, and if you go to purpleair.com forward slash maps, you could see all those uh, monitors on that map and they'll tell you the data they've been collecting on those monitors. And you could also see all the purple air monitors that uh, have been placed across um, the US and across the world. Um, so we're part of that international study, um, and if anybody would like to get involved, uh, we still have a few air monitors available. Um, the only commitment is um, it would have to be a three, it's a three-year commitment, um, so uh, NASA can analyze the data, um, and then it has to have an internet and a power source, and the monitor is not too big, it's probably like this, a little smaller than a coffee, coffee mug, um, and uh, and that's pretty much it. It's very, um, it doesn't require too much work. So if anybody's interested, please let me know. We're gonna use this data uh, to compare and contrast with the monitors that we're purchasing through the grant we got from CARB and kind of like a parallel study, uh, which is uh, the Atmo, they're called Atmo tubes. And these, the purple air monitors, they collect uh, what's called particulate matter. It's pretty much particles in the air. Um, not necessarily, it won't necessarily tell you a particular, um, you know, if it's a metal, a gas, or what sort of pollutant it is, but it'll tell you how many particles on the air are in the air. And usually the more particles in the air, the more contaminated your air is. Um, and then the difference between the monitors we have, which are called the Atmo tube. The Atmo tube measures particulate matter but it also measures volatile organic compounds, which are like gases and things alike. So it'll actually be able to tell us um, what sort of gases are being released into the air, as well as the amount of particles that are in our communities. So we have three objectives for our project. Um, the first is to characterize um, the air pollution in the corridor. So basically we wanna identify where it's coming from, what are the sources um, and what kind of pollution they're producing and what time of the days are they producing this pollution. And then so we can, and then ultimately, so we can figure out how it's affecting our public health. Um, 
and then we're going to compare across different parts of the community and across the city. And then the third objective is um, we're going to try to identify the daily activities that contribute to us being exposed um, to this poor air quality and pollution. So aim one, if you can see what we're going to do, our qual committee, um, we have about 30 residents in this committee, uh, 10 are in high school and 20 are adult members of the community. And they're gonna be walking these different routes. Um, we're gonna do this about uh, three or four times in the next three, four months. Um, we have five different routes that they're gonna be doing. And we're gonna walk them twice a day, uh, measuring the air quality along these routes to try to identify where these polluting sources are coming from and where we're being in fact impacted the most uh, by this pollution. So these are the five routes we're gonna be doing and the areas it's gonna cover. So some of the neighborhoods you could see, uh, East Side, which I think is Pacific Electric Park now, Madison Park, Delhi, Cedar Evergreen, Cornerstone Village, Lion Street, um, these are some of the neighborhoods we're gonna be covering. Um, and like I said, we're gonna do this um, about three or four times in the next three months. And we're gonna do this twice a day. So basically uh, in the morning and then in the afternoon to see if there's any differences in the time of day. And then uh, also compare these routes to try to identify these different sources of pollution. The second aim uh, to compare with the rest of the city uh, we're going to have residents either walk or drive out to these uh, focal points. And basically, uh, each resident is going to be responsible for measuring six of these points. They'll get to each point and then uh, they'll turn on their air monitor and they'll collect the air sample for 10 minutes at each point. And then same thing, we're going to do this about three or four times in the next month. Uh, also, once in the morning, once in the afternoon. Uh, to compare uh, the air quality in different parts of the city compared to our focus area here in the southeast side where the industrial corridor is. Um, so there's about 89 spots that we're going to focus on. And then we're also going to take two baseline samples, which are going to be out in the hills and by the ocean, um, which in theory has less people, less industry and things like that, sort of like as a baseline to compare um, uh, what the air quality is like in a less impacted community and then compare it to what it's like here in a very dense populated city. And then our final aim, um, so uh, we're gonna take half of those community members and we're gonna put an Atmo tube in their home and we wanna see, um, Basically, if having an air monitor in their home changes their ha uh, their daily habits and improves their the air quality in their home, um, the reason we want to do this, uh, we want to we're basically going to have them do a journal and jot down you know everything they did in the day, um, so we can see if they if their um, if their daily activity changes once there's an air monitor in their home and see if that could actually help uh, contribute to improving the air quality. And so that's the, our third aim of the project. Um, and yeah, so we're gonna be doing this for the next three or four months with the hope of collecting all this data and then uh, being able to have our uh, residents from the QUAD committee, as well as us present it to the school board, to the city and other community uh, members like yourselves, uh, like we're doing here today. Um, so yeah, this is the project we're working on that we've been working on. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions or comments, uh, I don't know how much time we have left. Any com com uh, any questions, comments? I myself are interested in uh, getting um, air pollution because I'm uh, right behind the street uh, car facilities and they have a cement company that's right there. And it's right in the middle of the neighborhood. And I think it causes a lot of uh, headaches in the community, which I have gotten. That's what I'm just testifying about myself, but I think it does bring a lot of problems to have a cement company right in the middle of the neighborhood. Uh, and uh, 
the difference between the street cars. So that's one of my concerns too. Yeah, yeah, totally. If you're interested, uh, uh, I'll get your contact info right now. Um, and we'll talk about, see what we can do to maybe get you a monitor. Um, also, one thing I forgot to mention, um, uh, it's very important, you know, for us to be involved in this general update uh, process, general plan update process, um, you know, because if the city doesn't hear from us what we want, uh, you know, they're not going to incorporate it. So it's very important, you know, we tell the community what we want. So our hope is that, you know, with this information that we gather and with the community support, you know, we can get new businesses into the community that aren't going to, uh, you know, uh, how do you say, aren't going to pollute our communities aren't going to poison our air, um, you know, so hopefully it'll be a, a way for the city um, to have new green industry and hopefully, you know, more parks and things like that to help improve the community. Um, and with that, uh, we actually had a meeting with another of the council members, uh, council member Phil Becerra and the director of the planning agency. And, um, they said the rough timeline is possibly planning to adopt it sometime in the fall, just so everyone's aware, um, you know, to be prepared for that, to be prepared to participate, um, because there will be more um, community forums that they want to gather input at. And, you know, it's the perfect time to, to um, you know, voice your opinions, give your solutions, your ideas. Um, you know, I've been encourage, you know, talking with uh, Council Member Becerra and, and Peñalosa and uh, Director Tai, like, this is a good time to think outside of the box because, you know, we need a lot of solutions right now in the city. There's a lot of problems, but this is something where, um, you know, there there is solutions to it, you know. It's just we have to be vocal about it and and let our city council know that, that you know, we can't be living in these conditions. Um, so, so Leo, um, just real quick, Ruby. So there's a there's a possibility there's a possibility for you to get the purple air that is part of the international, and that's the commitment to have it for three years, which I think it would be a good thing for you to have yes. if you cross proximity to that cement factory, uh -huh. and we got the Admo tube that is short term, that is basically for our study, but it will collect in addition to. Uh, to the the uh, particular matter, it will also collect uh, the volatile organic compounds, and so uh, I think that you know we can work with you on that. But also, Margarita is, is getting ready to to host a uh, a, a a round table uh, for community leaders uh, to discuss how uh, the city is going to be doing the outreach to the EJ communities like like ours, and so. So I think it's on the 9th, I believe. Uh, Margarita can share more information with you. Maybe Elisa has more information on that. Uh, so, yeah, so yeah I, I could talk about it really briefly. Um, thank you, Jose and Leonel. Very impressive, uh, especially the last part of the, um, how you've made a lot of traction, you know, in um, taking it to a neighborhood level and measuring the air quality. I'm really impressed with the work that you all are doing. and. Um, yeah, I just wanted to remind like Ruby and Lucy and others on the call, you know, we've been able to convene um, a group of uh, representatives from the 20, there are 21 neighborhoods, even though they're they're by census tract, they, they are in 21 neighborhoods, the environmental justice areas that the state has designated. And so, um, yeah, we're getting together and we're talking about like, how are we going to do outreach differently, right? How are we going to make sure that we're reaching out the abuelita who doesn't have internet access, you know, a way that she can participate in a survey or, you know, some other way of getting information so that she understands, okay, what does environmental justice mean to me and why should I, um, why should it matter to my family? And so it really dovetails with the work that Madison Park, you know, is doing and, and other uh, organization so um, it it's gonna be um, it's gonna be different and I think because we have that additional time that's gonna help us really uh, think and do it um, differently so that we're able to reach a wider a wider um, appeal you know in our community especially from the 21 neighborhoods so we're gonna need everyone's help like Ruby and, and the Arthesia Pilar team and Trisha and, and of course you know Madison Park you're there but we're really going to need to do like a grassroots 
way of engaging community around environmental justice. And then as this plan continues forward, you know, we'll be able to at least, you know, demonstrate um, collectively, you know, this is what we, we tried our best, we we're doing this, and this is what we're seeing. But, um, but thank you. I, I don't want to take up your meeting because I know we have like other questions and stuff. Uh, yeah, is there any more questions? Uh, I, I had some comments. I, I had some comments. Hi, hi, Leonel and mm -hmm. hi, Jose. It's it's a pleasure to meet you both, um, even if it's in the Zoom setting. Um, but I just wanted to share that I have taken into account your policy proposals. I too am a supporter of environmental justice. I, I want to see it be part of our general plan, and uh, know that in myself, you have somebody that will uh, not only champion those policies, but uh, I will. Um, work with you, the experts, in educating myself as much as I can to ad adopt these uh, these policy proposals. Um, so I, I would encourage you. I'm going to put in my email in, in the chat um, my assistant's um, email, and if you can follow up there, um, I'd like to have an in-depth uh, uh, meeting with you uh, so that we can uh, discuss this and and lay out a, a plan of action. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we appreciate, appreciate that very much. I think that we, the whole city is excited about the new leadership and the possibilities. So uh, that we are very enthusiastic about that possibility of uh, bringing these issues to the forefront. Okay, absolutely. We'll follow up with you, with your assistant. Wonderful, thank you. And there was other uh, one more um, piece of information I wanted to provide. Um, Jose, you had mentioned uh, in your presentation at the beginning um, concerns related to accessibility when it comes to COVID testing and vaccination um, for folks that do not utilize the internet. Um, we discussed this at city hall, um, at city council meeting yesterday, and um, we are working on on introducing a plan that is going to be cohesive um, so that we can reach those folks that are that are challenged digitally. Um, we're gonna see what this looks like, but I know uh, a start is that we're introducing kiosks at our COVID testing locations so that folks that don't have internet um, that struggle with, with utilizing uh, electronic devices, they can schedule vaccination and they can schedule uh, different um, appointments around COVID um, at kiosks. So I'm sure we're going to have more information to roll out in, at our next meeting. Great. Thank you. That's good news. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I like that idea. Also, I, I would like to uh, say that uh, El Salvador Park has some computers that I know uh, people don't really know it's there. So uh, we really need to train the seniors in that area to use the computers in itself. We have resources that are not really advertised either. So do we have any more questions? Uh, Actually, I uh, wanted to make one, one comment uh, in regards to what uh, Council Member uh, Hernandez said about uh, the COVID kiosks. Um, uh, maybe uh, y'all should reach out to uh, the school district and maybe see if you can place a kiosk in the school district. Um, because I know that's an uh, initiative that we're doing um, with the air monitors. Like we're working on uh, possibly getting the air monitors in the school. And uh, they actually signed a resolution um, that they're going to be in support of environmental justice. So just another, um, just another, um, uh, what do you call it? Like just another opportunity uh, for something the city to use and reach out to those communities. So it might be good to place those at the schools if they allow it. That's a great recommendation, and I thank you for it. Absolutely, and this is part of why I'm so excited uh, for us to meet together so that we can work in conjunction with each other in introducing more environmental justice. Okay, do we have any more questions, Alyssa, or? Um, it does not look like it, but um, I did want to bring up, Margarita mentioned it, um, and Teresa also commented that Santa Ana College is providing drive-through uh, COVID testing. Um, Teresa, would you want to um, speak more to that regard? All right, can um, 
Yeah, so I'll post the link, um, but yeah, Santa Ana College is providing free testing. Yes, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Hi. you know what, I just needed to unmute myself. Um, my laptop died today, so I'm trying to learn how to work this new system. Um, thank you for um, allowing me to be here. Um, yes, um, the mayor, uh, city council of Santa Ana and uh, 360, which is the company, um, is uh, effective today, uh, providing drive-through COVID testing, um, COVID-19 testing at Santa Ana College. Uh, we took a break over the holidays with another company and effective today, they started testing. Um, we do have, um, basically it is by appointment and it is very safe. And it, the contract is for a few months. So if our um, uh, city and Santa Ana College and Rancho um, and the county decide to do vaccines, my understanding is we will transition to a vaccination center also. Um, we have nursing students and we also have um, other folks in the community that are willing to volunteer that are nurses. I was just talking to somebody on the way home. And so um, just know that we're here for you. Um, we're here for the community and we're glad to support in any way that we can. Gracias. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Alyssa, should we, if there's no more questions. Um, I had a question. On. I had a question um, okay. in regards to Teresa. I was just looking at the link that you guys sent and it looks like they're asking for more verification um, of identity? Yes. Um, yes, that is correct. Um, they are asking for, um, to ensure that people are residents of Santa Ana. That is correct. The previous company was actually, um, you know, a little looser on that, if you will. Um, in addition, um, all of Rancho Santiago Community College employees and uh, staff, in other words, staff and students, we're also um, going um, to be tested, uh, but now um, it is in fact um, residents only of Santa Ana. Okay. okay. I, I know there's been a lot of issues in regards to uh, people coming and, and taking advantage of some of these free resources or free vaccines uh, for the county. And so I, I just, you know, I didn't notice that. Thank you. Correct. Mm -hmm. No, you're correct. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's just that people need to show proof that they're residents of Santa Ana. That is correct. And it is by appointment. Um, in the past, you know, people were just showing up and this time it is by appointment. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any more questions or comments before we go? Um, I want to say thank you to Jose and Leonel, you know, it, it was the best presentation and informative of some of the issues that I've been wanting to work on and which uh, the Neighborhood Association has been working on that's very important, which is the general plan and the environmental justice. So uh, well, if people are interested, please give me a call on that so we could add the committee to it. Um, Thank you, Ruby. If you need anybody else, one another uh, set of uh, monitors, please like, to let you know, and we can do more than one. I would, I think we should, do need to present another one in the uh, late spring. Uh, there's a March. We have meetings bi-monthly, uh, but the next meeting, seeing how everything is going, I really need uh, the information about the general plan and the conciseness of the of the environmental justice work that you're doing with the environment is something that I've been wanting the neighborhood to work on uh, very much so about the health and wellness of the community. So thank you very much. I'm very impressed. Thank you. Thank Ruby, you. Th this is Margarita. Um, I saw that we have some representatives from our police department. Maybe we can have them oh, introduce yes. themselves. By all means. So we've got yes. um, Melissa Ortega, and then we have our Corporal uh, Velasquez. So, okay. Go ahead, Melissa. Go ahead, Melissa. Me first. Okay. <laughs> Hi, this is uh, police service officer, Melissa Ortega. Um, 
the community liaison with the police department. If you guys need any resources or help right now, I'm stationed at the West End substation Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. So if you guys have any questions or concerns you want to drop by or anything like that, the sub if you guys are not familiar with the small substation that we have, it's right there in that same complex as uh, Walmart. And it's a great resource to have if you guys ever need any information and don't want to come to the main police department. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for letting me attend your neighborhood association meeting. I'm Corporal Rick Velasquez. I am the supervisor for our directed enforcement team. Here, what we do primarily is we listen to the community concerns. We go to neighborhood association meetings. We go to community functions such as coffee with a cop. And this is where we build that one-on-one -on -one interaction with our citizens. We build communication, we build the strong relationships. And this is, we're following the plan of our, our chief of police, David Valentin, to be number one in community policing. So what we do when we get the complaint regarding either gang activity, narcotics, homeless issues, prostitution, and now we've seen illegal gambling houses coming up or any other quality of life issues. It's what my team, we go out there and we monitor the activity. We either send in undercover units. And then if we are able to see the, the criminal activity or what type of other activity is going on, then we have the black and white police, police officers go ahead and stop the individuals. And that's where we begin doing our enforcement. So an example is a, a drug house or a illegal gambling house. If we work it up, we have enough for a warrant and then we go ahead and execute the warrant. We make the arrest and hopefully we shut down the house, uh, the gambling house or the, or the drug house and we notify code enforcement. And along with them, we, we red tag the house and that way we're able to shut it down from beginning to end. So that's the type of, the type of issues that my team handles. And here I'm gonna go ahead and, and, not, and give everybody my email and my work phone. So we already had a couple of examples of people contacting me here uh, through direct message of some issues go going on in, in the area. And I'm gonna start helping them. And I, I welcome everybody to go ahead and give me a call. And if I can help directly, say it's a homeless issue, then I would get a, a hold of our quality of life team. If it's some other issue, I'll get a hold of the gang team or our vice team. So. You could use me and my number, my email to go ahead and, and notify, notify me of any issues going on in your city. We're here to help. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, anybody have any questions or issues they want to talk about? I, I do want to bring up uh, just an observation that I've had. Um, I I understand why maybe they're, they're not like I've seen a lot more homeless out um, in the community and not necessarily specifically our area, but um, just wondering, I know that there's been issues with the, um, with the homeless shelter right there on downtown Santa Ana, but is, is the um, uh, corporal, is it corporal captain? I don't know. It's Corporal, Corporal. Velasquez. Corporal, Corporal Velasquez. Is there, is the um, the quality of life teams, you know, is, are they still going out and try, like with CityNet, is, is that still a provider of the city that's yes, trying to yes, engage exactly. the homeless? Yes, the quality of the life team has been expanded to a 10 man team as well. And they go all based on the My Santa Ana apps. So what they do, it's like a caravan where the officers respond to the applications online. Um, they respond first, make sure the scene is safe, followed by the social workers, followed by the cleanup crew. So yes, uh, uh, we do have social workers with us or with the quality of life team and they're able to, they're attempting to place as many people as they can into permanent housing. If not initially start with one of our shelters, which is the courtyard, the county shelter or the link, which is the Santa Ana shelter. But yes, we're still working. Um, hi, Corporal Velasquez. So it looks like someone raised their hand um, by the num last four digits, 8840. Um, uh, that's me, I, Alan. Okay. Hi, Alan. Hi. Um, 
Uh, yes, hello. Uh, this is not only to Jose, but also to um, uh, Jonathan and everyone else. It, it seems to me that there's a historical inequity over the years regarding housing and, and addressing the needs of the New England community, which the environment business uh, looks at a factor but it also has to look at the historical uh, ways that our barriers have been treated, uh, and getting a disproportionate share of the problems um, and, and uh, burden, um, either to zoning, neglect, um, or lack of respect for the historical natures of the neighborhood. It seems to me that it's not only that each neighborhood needs to to, to uh, join in this effort, but it seems that the city needs to make a bigger commitment towards the neighborhoods. Uh, otherwise, um, our environment, our, our, our health uh, is, is being affected and, and that we don't have the economic resources, the city resources to address it. The only thing that we get is that uh, we can send, um, the police, and it's not a police problem. So I, I was wondering if that's going to be incorporated in in what you're doing, Jose, or should it be? Because I think we really need more of this being part of the whole overall city. Like they made a commitment to art, like they made a commitment to youth. They need to make a commitment to poor people because 80% of the city is poor. And, and they live in those uh, 30 plus percent neighborhoods that are all affected by this environmental justice issue. Alan, I think it's a, it's a process. Look, uh, uh, you know, we're just happy with the work that we've been doing because, you know, like, like I said, I, I'm here in the neighborhood for 22 years. Um, it wasn't not until Brass Tech, which is a metal plating company came less than a thousand yards from Kennedy and less than a thousand yards from Madison Elementary that I, I, I found out that it was not only one company but a corridor of 42 companies that require special permits for AQMD. So that was a surprise to me. You know, you, you and I, we've been involved with this uh, building healthy communities for 11 years now. And, um, and, uh, you know, the endowment always asks, oh, this is really interesting. The Orange County doesn't have environmental justice issues. And it's like, well, actually we do, but we don't know about it, right? And so this was really was an eye opener for us. It was an eye opener because yeah, not only- The environmental issue is also zoning with the density, uh, with the development along the railroad track, uh, the major arterial cutting through our neighborhood with the smog uh, from the cars. All of this is, is affecting our health from, from the lead in our body uh, to our children, uh, in our bloodstream and from the asthma, from the cement factory in our Tito Pilar. Th this, they've been around for years, you know? Yeah. So we have the issue. We don't have a commitment from the city. Yeah, well, I think that it's an opportunity to do things differently uh, with the new uh, city council. And, you know, the, the district jump on it and, you know, they pass a resolution, environmental justice resolution, and they were looking forward to the next time that we, the next grant application that to include these monitors that I hope, hoping that you guys will, will have them in their homes, but they could be at the school as well, because, you know, there's also a group of, of pediatricians looking into how grave is the asthma in the kids at Kennedy and Madison compared to, to other kids. And the preliminary data tells us that the, the, when the kids uh, go to the hospital for, for with, you know, crisis of uh, respiratory crisis due to asthma, uh, those kids from the neighborhood, where our neighborhoods, they they stay longer in the hospital. They also miss more days of school, and they get sicker. So, so that means that you know, um, you know, there's there's a, there's something that there's a pilot that is, is being uh, run right now with kids with asthma at Madison, but obviously for that you need all these 
you know, paperwork permits and everything else. But I think the school district has made tremendous progress in the last year when we brought this issue to their attention. And we're hoping that, you know, we this progress also be, be made with, with the city. So it, it's, it's a long process. When you look at cities like Long Beach and Wilmington, these people be working on environmental health issues for decades. And to us, it's like, you know, this, we are on our third year of funding and, um, and just trying to begin to sample what is it that we're breathing? Because I think that's one of the important things. So like, how serious, how worried should we be? Or maybe we, we don't need to be worried about it. But, you know, like, it, it's just we're going to systematically take samples of the air. And then when we have that, we'll present it to the neighborhoods, the public, the parents' meetings, to the school district, to the city. This is what we found, right? So we, we are, we're doing that. Thank you, Jose. Um, I also, uh, there's a, someone else has their hand raised. So I think we wanna get through all the questions. Um, so last for digits, 8840. What's your question? Yes. Am I unmuted? Yes. Okay, very good. Thank you. This is Esther Fonseca. Artisa Pilar uh, Neighborhood Association. Um, I just wanted to ask, I'm sorry, we were speaking with the officers and then uh, another issue was presented by Alan. I just wanted to follow up. Uh, thank you uh, for being here, officers, and introducing yourselves. Uh, I just wanted to please, uh, if you could repeat your names and also your contact, uh, your titles, name, title, and your contact phone number, please, for us. I'm uh, sorry, I have my pen ready so I can take that down. Sure, it's going to be Santa Ana Police Officer Corporal Rick Velasquez. Uh huh. My phone number is 714-245-8521. Okay, and uh, the uh, young woman that was speaking also, the other officer? So my name is uh, Police Service Officer Melissa Ortega, and my number is 714-245. 8508 and my email is m o r t e g a at santa dash anna dot org. Okay, um, Corporal Velasquez, is it easier to get a hold of you on the phone or do you prefer email? You can do e email as well. So it's going to be r then Velasquez, v e l a s q u e z at santa-anna.org. Very good, thank you. No problem. All right, so any other questions? I don't uh, see anyone else with their hand raised. Um, yeah, really, Hi, so I, myself, if possible. Commander Joe Marty. Margarita, are you there? Oh, yeah, Margarita is yes, translating. Uh, yes, I'm so sorry. I missed you, Commander okay. Marty. I'm so That's sorry. Okay. okay. So, yes, okay. we have another special guest, of course, the commander. Let's not forget him. So, go ahead, Commander. <clears throat> you want to share a little bit about yourself, what, what you're doing? I mean, that way we all know. Gracias. Absolutely, absolutely. Good, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, forgive me for not showing my face. I'm dealing with uh, some minor symptoms after getting uh, shot number two of the Moderna. So, uh, but but mm -hmm. you get through it, and uh, you know, it, little body aches and things like that. Nothing that you can't get through. So, fighting through it. Uh, should be back at work tomorrow. But thank you, everybody, for having us today. My current assignment is the commander in charge of operations division. And what that is, it's still part of our field operations, kind of right beside the patrol division. But what I do is I oversee all of our special teams, okay? I oversee uh, Corporal Rick Velasquez, who's one of my front leaders there uh, in charge of the directed team. We also have our quality of life team uh, that d does amazing work uh, dealing with homeless encampments and responding to homeless complaints on a daily and a nightly basis. We have our downtown team that deals with all the downtown uh, businesses. We have our civic center team. And then we have our AB 109 team that works with our, our probation team. In addition to that, I oversee Melissa and her team, uh, which is the community engagement section. And we deal with all the different activities uh, that we host 
that we were hosting pre-COVID and that we are looking forward to hosting once again with, with our community, Coffee with a Cop, Pancakes with Santa, all of the different events that we have where we engage with our community members. And I'm just, I'm just super excited to be working with all of you. And if you guys need anything, you know, we have very responsive uh, workers. And if you need anything from me, I have, let me give everybody my email address because I would rather have you guys go directly through me and the corporal because I'll tell you what, you're going to get a quicker response uh, that way uh, instead of going through the different layers. So let me give you my email address. I'm still in the middle of changing uh, work extensions right now because I'm still getting my office put together. So let me start off by my email address, and that's going to be J Marty, M A R T Y, at Santa hyphen Anna dot org. And as soon as I lock down a, 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 an extension, a phone extension that's going to be permanently mine, I will definitely uh, uh, reach out to everyone and provide that. Thank you so much for having us. Just want to say thank you for coming on and giving this is what we have the neighborhood meeting is to introduce the community of the police and the numbers so when you have an issue we can speak to them or we, as a neighborhood we can work with them. Uh, Lisa, how many minutes more do we have I just was going to present to the neighborhood some of the issues we've been working if anybody's interested. Uh, I think we have 10 minutes. Margarita. 10 minutes? We have 10. Yeah. Oh. Um, well, I just want to review that well, because Jose and Leon, their presentation is exactly what the neighborhood's been working on. And I want to encourage people to the general plan and especially for the neighborhood, the environmental justice. Also, because we have the streetcar going through our neighborhood and we've been having some inconveniences of the detours and what the issues are going to be that we'll be bringing some updates on that. Um, also, um, I know there's the apartment building on Hollow and uh, Holly and Fifth Street that is going to be opening up in the next few months. And there's applications. I know another a lot of families who would like to get their families to live within the Artesia Pilar neighborhood. So if you want that information, it's within the city's website. Uh, also, um, Tricia Morales, are you on there? So you want to present something? She is our co-chairperson. Uh, co uh, well, she's the chairperson of the Flower Park. Uh, she is co-meeting with us this uh, today. And so I hope she could present it's a couple of issues that she's working with. Trisha? Hello. And yes. can you hear me? Yes. I don't know. I unmuted myself. Um, yes, I want to thank you, Ruby. Um, you know, we've been working together as joint meetings and um, just thank everybody for coming. I don't know if we have um, any um, any neighbors from Flower Park. I did send the flyer out there to the Flower Park community for them to join tonight's meeting. And um, so I don't know if um, anybody's out there from Flower Park that joined the meeting. Um, but also to um, just wanted you know to um, that we would be doing these joint meetings together because we. Um, are right next to each other and we have the same issues with the homeless and I know a lot of the kids here in Flower Park they go on over there to the Artesia Pilar um, neighborhood to go into the schools there um, to Carver and um, so just um, you know want to just keep um, doing these joint meetings together um, right now with this time because you know we can't meet up in person but I just wanted to go ahead too, just to um, um, throw out there that, um, you know, for resources, if anybody's um, needing any kind of help with um, groceries, um, my church, which is right there on the Artesia Pilar neighborhood, uh, Victory Outreach, um, Santa Ana, we will be having a grocery distribution on February the 20th at 11 o'clock, it starts there. Um, so we're just asking, you know, if you know anybody that needs food, um, you know, you're more than welcome to come out that day. Okay, thank you. Um, also, I'd like to introduce my uh, co-host, which is Lucy Saldanzo. Did you wanna say anything? Uh, and also I wanna thank Esther for calling in and uh, 
speaking to the police and getting our more information too. So Lucy, do you have anything that I missed that you want to bring up? Um, I did want to bring up something recently that, you know, uh, they were in contact with me and I know um, Manny Escamilla was recently, I guess, um, voted into the, the um, what is it called, the painting, the Alicia, help me, um, the murals. He does the commission. I'm not familiar. Uh, Margarita might know. Margarita, yes, <laughs> yes he's, he was appointed to the Arts and Culture Commission. Yeah, I, I was trying to see if you could read lips. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was. I, I saw your lips, but I can't read them. <laughs> I'll, do, I'll do charades next time. So one of, the th one of the things that, you know, our neighborhood has, you know, always wanted um, and, you know, we're, we're spread out very thin with a lot of the issues that we have in our neighborhood is to redo the mural that's on Civic Center. And so, you know, uh, Manny is very much interested. Jonathan, uh, prior to his um, city council seat, uh, supported the idea um, as part of um, uh, I forgot the name of your argument. roses. Roses in the concrete. Roses in the concrete. I I apologize. Um, no and, and so he he supported this, uh, you know, some time ago. And so I know we have a little bit of funding available, but this is something that you know, with Manny um, at the committee, uh, that we can definitely push forward. Uh, this is something that was created back in the um, I think uh, early '90s, late '80s. And uh, it's, it's something that's a fixture, whether popular or not, in our neighborhood that we want to preserve. So um, I'm hoping that we, as Articia Pelar, can come together with Manny and then Jonathan and make, hopefully make it happen. I, I want to thank you for that, Liz. Uh, Luz, I, I am completely in agreement with it. Um, and I will happily pledge um, $1,000 from my discretionary funds to help pay for that. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. It's one of the projects that we want to finish for the neighborhood to enhance it, and especially since so many things are going on. So uh, I believe I want to thank everyone for um, uh, listening. Ruby, in. Um, yep. so Teresa has her hand raised, and I think oh. Esther as well. Uh, Teresa, go ahead. Yeah, um, I just wanted to. I just wanted to share if you already have it all set up with the mural and and so forth. That's wonderful. I also wanted to let you know that we have a faculty member, Darren Holstetter, that works with our students. Um, that is also that also will do murals. Um, and so I just wanted to share that. Um, and sometimes we have Bear Paint Company that donates or provides paint for minimal fees, um, it, or sometimes they just donate it. So I just wanted to share that if, if that is something that might be helpful. Um, I know that Darren and our students would love to be supportive. Okay, that was it. Thank you. Teresa, um, this yes. is Council Member Hernandez. Yes. I just wanted to share, um, I think that's a great idea it mm -hmm. would be a tremendous for us to, to integrate those students, um, mm -hmm. also young members of the community to be part of that mural process. I remember when I was a kid, um, uh, many of us would go and watch folks paint and uh, touch up the mural and, and it just, it gives you a strong sense of, of home. So I think it would be great to, to integrate those mural students to be part of the project. I, I had the honor, ironically, of working with the mural team for all of my roses in the concrete events. They actually cr created several um, murals with me during that time. So a uh, tremendous group of students. Great, well, yes, of course, you know, so we're happy. Who do we connect with regarding the mural project? Because I know our classes start this Monday. So the sooner the better for our students. So I'll go ahead and include my assistant's email. In, okay. in the chat and if you can follow up we can set a meeting um okay. if i can have an ask of the artista pilar neighborhood is that if if you can assist in identifying uh the owner of the home i do believe that wall needs to be reconstructed so uh, i think that's step number one is is connecting with the 
the owner where that mural is centralized and getting the wall reconstructed? Um, I have done that already. Uh, I just need to know if anybody in the community knows how to reconstruct the building of the building of the fence. Uh, that would be really helpful because then we would really roll on, uh, get that going. Uh, if I can get somebody who, who knows all about brick fences. And uh, the owner, I had spoke to him just about three weeks ago and he's willing to help if we're willing to do the work. I think, um, I think Manny, uh, I don't know if he wants to lead it or not, but I know that he's very much interested in, and if we can forward the owner's information to him, um, that would be great and, and uh, see if they can, um, you know, I, I don't know, again, how the arts and, co uh, and commission runs and maybe they're, they're able to the uh, fund or assist in funding some of the repairs because I know that's been our biggest obstacle is that we needed to redo that wall and that was, I believe, you know, a big chunk of the price. But I do, while we have Teresa here, just a little bit of history on that. The, the artist, the artist is uh, a former uh, Santa Ana College uh, student uh, by the name of George. He was a Mecha student uh, along with myself. And so he took it upon himself to create this, um, this mural um, for our, our for our community, he, you, his family, I, I don't think he lives in the area anymore because we were doing this a couple of years ago. We did get a hold of him. And um, I reposted something on our Facebook page that gives a little history of the mural just uh, because it, it came up today, ironically, but he is an alumni. So um, it would be wonderful if SAC can be a partner with us in, in uh, re recreate, re, um, retouching it. Okay. We would love to do so. We'd love to do so. That's great. Thank you so much. And yes. if we could, and if we could do that, I, I would love to give him an award, uh, thanking him for his contributions to our our cultural heritage and the history George of our neighborhood. Love that. <laughs> uh, George would love that. That would be awesome. Okay. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, so Lucy and Ruby, um, I think Esther has a question, and I think that would be the last uh, okay, question. Great. Hi, Esther. If you can unmute yourself. Yes, hello. Um, uh, I had a question, please. So currently, is the plan just to redo the mural as is, just to um, touch it up, or, or is there a new mural with the new scenes uh, that, are, is, uh, that is proposed? Uh, we haven't uh, discussed that. That is going to be discussion of the committee. We might do both. We're not, it all depends on when we meet together as a committee. That has, uh, it's just right now, we're just in the phase of getting the fence fixed, then getting the event and get the contributions for the paint. And within that time period, uh, we will make discussions of what uh, we want to do with the, the mural in itself. Okay, Ruby, I would like to, um... I would like to be a member of the committee. I don't know who I asked uh, for that uh, or well, how I get on the committee. Of, uh, well, you just told me, so I'll just add, uh, put everybody together uh, in this committee. Uh, that would be so great, have, thank okay. you. You, you, have, you also had mentioned about, uh, it is a block wall that needs, uh, that's the block wall where the mural is, is currently. And you, yes. and I, uh, you had mentioned to me uh, that uh, the daughter of the, tenant, uh, the, uh, the, excuse me, the homeowner is requesting basically that the whole wall be knocked down and she get, uh, they get a brand new wall, uh, which is a very expensive, it's an expensive proposition. And basically that's a big, it's a, it's a very nice uh, uh, a position for them to be in if they're going to get a new block wall. I do have a gentleman who coincidentally did the block wall at, and her name is Lucy. She's the daughter uh, that you've been speaking to. Uh, who he's uh, he's excellent at building walls. I also know that you can actually only build, uh, for example, if there's uh, certain blocks that need to be replaced. The whole wall doesn't have to be replaced; just the ones that are damaged. So you can do that. That would be less expensive than uh, giving them a brand new wall, uh, since that's what they're uh, they are requesting. So I just wanted to make those comments, <laughs> uh, Lucy. You uh, also, I don't know if we have time. But there at the very bottom, you uh, there is uh, including traffic safety. Uh, I don't know if you wanted to, if we there's time for that to to discuss that or or not. You had brought it up before. 
uh, with me. Oh, oh, yes, we have. We're going to be having a, a discussion with the traffic that we've been having, uh, except uh, we're running out of time. And but we, I'll be contacting you about it. So, OK, that's fine. That's fine. OK. OK, um, I think, Alyssa, you said we only had a few minutes. Uh, is that the question? Then, um, yeah, I mean, I unless people want to unless people want to stay on. But I think we, you know, we've had a really good presentation. Um, I think with the traffic updates, um, Esther, um, you know, there, we formed a traffic committee with um, some of the uh, staff and um, the school principals in Artesia Pilar. So I think we definitely need to circle you back, you know, into that. So I'm working with Jimmy Brule and Mary Thorpe, Mary Troop, the, the principal at Fremont, just to see when would be a good time, because it's almost like you need a whole discussion around traffic safety because your neighborhood is so large, especially around schools um, and just other areas. Um, so I just know that Public Works is working on enhancing the roundabout um, near where you're at, Esther. So that's like a, an upcoming project. I know the council member has been in discussions with Public Works with our director, um, Saba. And so, um, so yeah, but, but we'll definitely include you that once I have a date, I'll let your team know. I'm sorry, who's this again, please? I'm so sorry. This is Margarita, <laughs> Esther. Okay. Margarita uh, you know Macedonio. Uh, I, I would very greatly uh, appreciate that. I have been, this is an issue that I've been working on since about, oh, I don't know, uh, since 2014, maybe. Uh, and I have worked with a lot of the city engineers, including William Galvez, a lot of his staff, yes. uh, Francisco, uh, over the course of many years. I have a lot of information that's very, very important. And uh, yes, especially the walk uh, through that we're supposed to be doing. But again, I have a lot of information, the history. Uh, this is of, of particular importance to me because this is my street. I, yes. I live on 15th Street, and it yes. is it, it is becoming uh, and has been an, a major issue. Uh, and as a matter of fact, Mr. Galvez is was supposed to be organizing a meeting through the city staff because he wants community input. But now I guess we're at the juncture where Jonathan is involved, and so we're going to do a walkthrough. And I would have, like I said, I have a lot of information uh, to yeah. uh, share. Esther, I will be, I can give you a call tomorrow, Esther. Um, I have Excellent. your information. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm working, uh, I'm like the, the Scott Kuttner, but not really, but yes, I'm, I'll be working with your neighborhoods and some of the other ones north of First Street. Excellent. I will wait, right. I, I look forward, forward to speaking, speaking with you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, are we saying thank you to everyone? This is kind of few issues yeah. that we've been a few issues that we've been working on. So people know that hopefully we'll attend our next meeting, which is going to be March the 31st. If they're interested about any of the other information, please give a call to Margarita or myself. I have my phone numbers on the uh, newsletter. So uh, thank you very much. Yes. Yes, um, Ruby. I think we had decided on the 30th because it's a Tuesday. Seem to work with folks. Um, I think just to get back on your schedule on the the last Tuesday of every other month, I think that's what okay. you're trying to okay. do. So, okay, everyone. Well, that that's a wrap. Thank you so much, everyone, for sticking around. Um, thank you, Madison Park, the council member, PD, and everyone. You have a safe night, and um, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Very much. Thank, thank you. you Margarita and Alyssa. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for guiding me. Oh, yes, thank, thank you. you. You're fabulous. It was wonderful. Fun. Good night. Good night. Good night.